So guys, we're picking up after they've done the pole plant. We've messed around with a few shapes of turns and now we see the skiers now trying the classic um, lifting up of the inside ski. And I wanted you to do this because sometimes I even like the, the standard basic simple drills. I can remember skiing with a, with a guy, a World Cup racer, who was about 28th in the world, very, very good skier. Um, and he said to me, you know, it's not time wasted if you just spent the next three to six weeks on one ski. <laughs> and literally, it's, it's not a bad thought, really, because alpine skiing is outside, outside. And if you watch my demonstration again, you'll see how I try to softly um, lift and put the ski ta uh, tail down. Whereas the students, you might see them slapping a bit around, you know, and because of Dylan's rotation, he's doing the drill out of strength rather than technique. You, people can still lift the inside ski and be out of balance, that's the issue. Like, yeah, this is quite out of balance still. But he's sort of getting the idea, what do you reckon? Yeah, uh, so I use this exercise as well uh, when I build already have built up some, some tension in the upper body and, and give some, some help how to balance because the exercise itself, if you, if you build up a step by step and teach step by step, it's, it's amazing because it, it goes on platform to create platform to balance on it and this platform is the inside edge under the foot sole, so this five mm -hmm. millimeter maybe and, and this is the, the main goal to find the platform to be able to unweight the inside leg uh -huh. and, and lift it up and be able to, to balance on it. And of course, what, what you see there, Jessica, uh, doing it really well. Of course, you see that the hands wobbling, everything involved in this movement because it's, it's not, not the tension there now with the upper body. they trying to have some tension, but of course it's a slippery platform and, and you have to build it up from, from down here. So from the edge, ankle tension, the, the position and also this all this axial parallel, uh, uh, axial parallel, parallel, yeah. parallel. And I think what you have to go back to is rewind this and listen to what Gary said. Because he's clearly said this is a great exercise when done at the right point of a course. You don't want to be doing this exercise with like Jessica who's floppy because you can see how she's not got the tension. And Jerry's trying to point out do it after you've built up stability yeah, and yeah. tension and torque. Yeah, yeah. For example now uh, Joe, you see the upper body is much more stable. It's express much more tension and you see this rotation is just slightly there and he's trying to stop it and he has a short ski so it's <laughs> actually much harder the, with, with that height and body to control this rotation. So you guys might at home be thinking now oh, this is an outside ski exercise alpine basic position which it is but Gary's pointing out very clearly hey guys if you don't build up the fundamental stability and torque and tension, this exercise is wasted. It's, it's, it's not it's not ready. It's it. too hard. Yeah, you're not so ready for all it. this all these drills, as long as it's not built up like like a drill, it's only just a test. Can you do it or not? Mm -hmm. And mainly the problem is that people cannot do it because at the first time, because need some help. How can I fix my upper body? How can, how can I build up tension? Where to focus, where I find, where I can find my platform exactly, that, that not the whole foot sole is to, to engage, it's only the inside edge and the big toe. So it's, it's, sl it's step by step has to build up and then everyone has a chance to, to master it like a drill. And then it looks more stable, and looks easy but yeah. it's not it's not and it's it's what Gary's saying is everybody that we see on this group who is a little bit floppy had the poles one gripping the poles and squeezing them they are suffering now and everybody who generally was quiet and stable and more talk more dynamic lower position because let's face it if I like a child lower my center of mass towards the ground it's easier it's, it's not as wobbly <laughs> it makes sense you know, so it'll be interesting to see how, like, 
you know, the group progresses with this. But I really feel like Gary's pointed out something very important. The timing of when you introduce exercises is important. Yeah. And how. And how. And how yeah. Which build step up. is the first and, and some, some ideas. Yeah. Okay, how can I touch at the first time this? Which I, Andy surprised me when she was doing it because she's a good ski and stable, but she made this look really difficult for different reasons in her case. And she's, she's just turning way too quick, zigzagging around. Um, and she really, it really challenged her, but yet she's quite stable. So in her case, it was just a matter of giving her a few tips and actually she settled into this drill fine. But be ready for your clients sometimes just not to clock it on the first time round. They need a, a little bit of time and some feedback. Um, and not all drills work for everybody. You know, sometimes you've got to adapt and change and things. But also, if, if, if we do a drill like this, at the first time, okay, it's, it's hard. It's, yeah. it's, it's the same with everything. Try out, try to solve the problems, but you have feel, okay, I'm wobbling with this, this, this. So have some idea and then practice. Yeah. And then practice. And with a good, uh, good uh, advice, you can always get better and better. And it's not a one-day program. Yeah. So we did that drill then, you know, we didn't mass practice it, but we did it um, for two runs and we eventually got better with the stability. And people then realised themselves, like Gary keeps saying, we, so they solve their own problems because they suddenly realise that we're constantly asking them for this tension. And the ones who aren't getting it suddenly realise they need it. To balance on one leg, it's natural. You want to stiffen up, you want the tension. So that's all we're asking them to do. Okay, so we then went off um, and now we obviously always bring it back into their own skiing and give them an opportunity to just feel like they're skiing down and they are um, still feeling like they, they could lift up the inside leg, but now I don't ask them to do it. I just ask them to get a sensation of it. But what I was addressing here is the rotation. And this is where I purposely took Dylan and asked him to start to feel like as he's going round the turn, he is turning his body a little bit against the ski. It's a dangerous manoeuvre because normally most ski instructors would say, look, try to just keep your body still and have some counter rotation, which is a very difficult thing. But when we look at this group here, where I had them actually turning slightly against the ski, I gave them a little bit of few tips and a drill, I think, here yeah, they're lining up better than they were before, Gary, but do you think they are? Do you think I've took it too far? What, what I see is always, okay, turn against the ski, ski direction is when? The timing. The timing, yeah. That's what, what makes it uh, difficult for people, okay, when exactly have to turn in which direction my body to, to get the position and uh, someone, for example, try too early this is mainly the problem and uh, at the end of the turn rotating twisting call it, twisting, yeah. twisting with the whole system uh, it can help because it's a it's a orientation that okay my upper body goes not following the ski tip mm -hmm. and this is it uh, we know and and uh, we address like okay the second part of the turn the steering phase is where you have to be in another direction because uh, you are open a little bit to the to the, to the valley so the, the downhill and there is where they can try to to counter rotate a little bit with the upper body my concern is that when we you know you, you can try all these things as sitting on a seat and getting in position yeah. I, what i did with the group was i took them on the really steep part of this hill and i said stand in the middle position guys and then just lean into the hill and sit down onto your in this case your right buttock yeah. and that's it you're now in the correct position because physics will put you into the alignment because you're on a hill this is what i mean by rotational separation yeah. And I said, look at how naturally the ski goes forward. It's not forced forward or forced back. And then after that, I then gave the body a task because Joe, uh, Senya, Jessica as well, and Dylan, they, they all were just coming around like a fridge freezer. 
<laughs> like a dolly. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I said, it's hard because if I don't give their upper body something to do, I feel like it's going to take me a long time to stop this problem. But you have to remember, this is in the space of 10 minutes. And I feel like that I looked at that run afterwards. I thought, Dylan's shoulders before, when you looked at him, you could not see his uphill shoulder. It was always yeah. tucked behind his downhill shoulder. Whereas, guys, if you go back and look at Dylan on that shoulder, you'll actually see that his shoulder, so you could actually see the jacket across here. Now, I'm going to break a second because I want Gary's opinion here as well. If I go back a few frames, now, this woman here, in the red, way up here, right, coming down, here's my skier, just set off, she set off, woman in the red, she's turning, still turning, and clatter and bang. She, her husband here, begins rapidly to blame our skier, making nice turns, going down the hill, and absolutely was really aggressive and shouting at them. And, and this is the problem on, on courses because there's a little bit of red mist and focus with our guests who are really accurately focused on what they're doing. But what do you think, Gary? I mean, whose problem is that? It's not a serious question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, maybe you think it's... <laughs> you do your turns down the hill, you have your corridor, you're not even, uh, even fast. So someone comes from behind and hit you, it's like on the, on the street. Yeah. So it's not about... If you ever hit anyone from behind, even if you feel that that person's cutting across you or something, it's your fault, it's like in a car. You know, if you hit from behind, you were just too close. So you, you weren't allowing for the fact that this person might turn or whatever. Um, but in this case here, clearly poor Andy was going down making nice turns in controlled corridor. We could see 30 seconds before this woman sliding down out of control, could not ski. Um, and yeah, it's, it's interesting how people react. Of course, if anything had happened then, the guy had spoke to me, I would have said, oh, well, why don't we look at the video? And that would have suddenly shut his mouth. But I said to Gary that this is a husband trying to justify why he took his wife on that run and say, it wasn't your fault, it was the girl's fault. No, it's your fault, the husband's fault. Shouldn't have had her on that run. Anyway, back to the task. Andy's looking great as she has stability and talking tension. Anyway, she's doing a good job of that medium style turn. And I like Andy because she's always nicely compressed. You know, she, yeah. she feels like a start positions that number eight I want, not the number nine or ten, you know. So I'm pleased with that run. Um, what are we doing now? This is the controversial part. <laughs> yes. So before, guys, I was, I was in a lecture and I was trying to explain fore and aft because I was looking at the Landis 1 skiers, who was level 3, um, and they were going through the gates and stuff like that. And, and luckily, I caught some of the turns where I had the trainer, Martin, and, and the guys in the same part of the turn. And what was really interesting, you've heard myself and Tom Gelly go on about this a lot, is that whereas Martin's point in the turn there was backside heavy, really here ending his turn, the guys were ending their turn completely loaded forward. And I was explaining to the guys how, especially with booster straps and this, that, the other, there's quite a mechanism, there's a spring in that boot. And if you're too far, far forward at the end of the turn, you're going to get naturally go too far back at the start of the turn because yeah. you've got to yin yang it and you've got to move between it now tackling fore and aft is a minefield of difficulties so i found and, and i discussed this with tom where we were making like a range of movement drill and i've adapted that drill since i spoke to tom because i've learned from it and i've learned from the likes of gary and people who you know have pointed out about too much vertical extension and stuff you know and getting habits so I've now adapted the drill to be like this. And what I carefully tell people to do is to eccentrically pull. So this is not a drop down, it's an eccentric pull. And then a, a, a feeling of contraction as I go up to an eight. And then I go down and up. Now, why am I going down and up? It's not just because I want range of movement, but the finish position here is the finish position that trainer Martin was in. It's the finish position that I have Gary in when I've just looked at him with the group doing his high performance turns. It's my finish position a lot of the time. It's, uh, uh, okay, it's exaggerated a bit, but it's backside onto the tape. Yeah, yeah. 
And this allows me, because I'm in that position, to naturally cross over and extend. And then I, I can get into the position I need to be to topple over the skis. And interestingly, if we watch the group go down, I'd like to see, like from my side, where Dylan is a lazy skier. Very lazy skier. And um, here, I feel like... He suddenly clicked and when he watches next run after this, when he goes back to detuning this, it to me it was great. But I don't know Gary if you agree that it's worth doing stuff like this or do you find other approaches? Well, if, if, if people start to move like this uh, and they learn skiing and they heard a lot of about forward, 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 so they try to avoid to, to lean back, the lean back is good. That they try to avoid but we need the tail of the ski to control the end of the turn so they have to have improved some 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 uh, some feeling okay some why, why I, is the tail so important at the end of the turn Gary? because the the widest point on the tail where you anchor your ski so it's if you have weight on it it's anchoring so it stops the rotation of the turn so mm, it's yeah. uh, it's where you can really do you get that, push, guys, what he's saying here, that the, he's anchoring himself down when you wedge yes, yourself in? To the everybody, everybody had the, the feeling when the ski goes and it's everything fine, you can turn your ski, but in that moment, then you have a back heavy position or you're leaning back, you feel the ski goes just straight forward and you can not turn it. It's not a failure in the right timing. The timing, the, yeah. the timing is, if I use it in my turn and I know okay I need this back heavy to stop my turn get on the edge and the ski sending forward that means the ski is on the edge so I can I have a platform a stable platform to initiate the next one so it is a four inward movement and when we it, were looking at Gary's short turns before with the group they were they were shocked to see that actually your skis were doing this like almost like a dolphin because of this fall and aft yeah. movement was so quick in the feet. And I, I was explaining this, how that is how turns are happening. And they were like, well, I don't get it. Why, why is that? Yeah, that's because you speed up the ski in the turn. The, the ski has to go a, a rounder line, a longer line as the center of mass. The center of mass has to cross over it. So that's, and we use the end of the, the tail of the ski. And it's not about this last five centimeter is like from the front binding to the tail is the second part of the turn when i want to initiate the turn i try to use the tip to, to the, the binding to the binding and and that's how it 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 works with, with this dog it, it, it's turn. interesting because from a um obviously as gary's saying it's stopping it's stopping the turn from sliding out if you wake the tails it won't wash out at the end but interestingly a lot of power lifting and weight lifting we do we slowly progress from whole foot and often then really feel the heels working because as i was explaining to the group if i went to pick something heavy up off the floor i wouldn't stand on my toes and try and pick it up i would drive down through the whole of the foot and i think that's why some people slip on ice so much because the forward heavy Towards the end of the turn, the tails are just yeah, washing tails, away. Because forwards heavy, it's like uh, because every everybody hurts. Okay, forwards, forwards, and they're pushing hard at the end. Of hard the turn. end of the turn. That means the whole boot transferring the pressure on the tip of the ski, and then behind is nothing, so it wipes out. Yeah. One thing is important that this this back heavy position. It's not a passive. Mm. calf pressure <laughs> so if you to so really back sit is not in this position you need a dorsiflexion to hold the pressure hold the tension that that you can control your ski and your center of mass the mass goes with the ski because if someone just losing the ski it's back heavy but too much on the calf then then it's too much pressure too much uh, too much push Mm. on the tail and, and you wouldn't break. really get forward really you yeah, yeah it's just not stable because yeah. in that moment these people are just just trying to catch up with the ski again and, and hang, on, hang on so it's not an active active uh, position to to start over the new turn and here guys you'll see that in in one run 
of just doing this drill, a four and a half is very hard to teach. And a lot of the times the reason I think, Gary, that a lot of people go forwards heavy after the apex of the bend, at the turn, is because of what you said. They hear the ski instructor go, you're too far back, you're too far back. And of course, once they cross the ball line, they feel safe and secure, don't they? And they go, yes, let's have some of that. And they dig it in. And the, the, that's the bit everybody wants to do. Yeah, look at me going across the slope. That's too late, guys. And that's, I think, what we're doing. I'd like you to look at the last run because now we detuned it slightly. And I feel like then we almost end up with a bit of a, an Ausgleichen turn, if you like, from the group, where it's not really, you know, we're not going to sink right down. I was exaggerating a little bit still because it's important. But I feel like now the guys are moving the right amount because what we don't want them, of course, is super exaggerating on a flat terrain. And we can talk about the virtual bump in the future and why this happens. But at the minute, to me, they just look mobile. You know, they're moving now and I, I'm happy with my group. It's more stable and, and uh, the deer, you see some movement. Yes, especially it's especially this Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a and, and nearly right movement. So this is where we can improve, okay, the timing to understand in which part of the turn, what I have to do, what is the K movements in the turn and that's what I like to to make the timing like uh, like with the clock system yeah. that from one hour to six hour and you can count like in Walter and in every point you have something to, to hold on, okay now I have to be there, now I have to be there, now I'm, it's the weight shift, it's the edge, it's the more the position, it's the shorter now, so give some orientation that in one turn it's always happening something in the right order then it looks good and yeah. it feels also, also good so guys this is the progression i made in two days with, with this group and obviously you can go back and look at some of the earlier videos but i hope you see that what we're trying to do as coaches is to accelerate the program as best as we can we don't just want to get the ski instructor drill book out and go oh tick i've done touching the boots now i'm dragging the pole now i'm doing this you really want to be as coaches starting to think about position of body and thinking mechanics and thinking what's going on here how can i quickly improve someone so if you look at dylan from day one or actually it's day two in the morning from two days well two days ago yesterday this was, you can say to yourself, which is before and after. <laughs> I hope you can see which is before and after. I hope you guys are able to really see for yourself the differences. And this is important that um, as coaches and trainers, we constantly, you know, push for excellence. Here with Jessica, the same I've mixed them up, so you, you know, I hope you can see which is the correct one, which is the, the not-so-good one. So, this is a little bit of an example of what I've done. Gary, you got any ads? So I did turn shape, I did dynamic positioning, I did range of movement with dynamic positioning, tension and pole planting, and I did the counter-rotation thing. Um, how did you feel it was? Do you think I could have got success somewhere else or do you think it worked? Some points worked really well. So, so what, what I really like that, uh, that they get some position and, and yeah, the turn shape is there. Nice picture by the way in that point. Uh, some idea from, from the pole plant timing and how to do it uh, and also the balance how to build up the balance. Mm, the, the turn shape is interesting. I think it's much more the first time that, that you demonstrate what you want. So the run turns as like an understanding, okay, how to, how to dig in the end of the turn because it's, uh, we talked about this is, a, this is a good drill, but there is a danger that they, they're hanging on the cuff and the ski goes away, but they must turn it. It's better like, by part in the first part of the turn, uh, and yeah, if you if you see the conversation, uh, difference the difference is in the, from from the first run to the the per day. Uh, I think it's 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 a progress in three days. 
if someone said, yeah, but we can do it in two days, mm. I think it's it's always needs time. So yeah. how the guys inter interpret interpret the, the the new stuff? It's a lot of information, and and three days it's a, it's it's a short time, also for this and this accelerated program, but. Everyone has the chance to pick up something that is getting better, and that's what you see in the in the, in the difference is that everyone had something in these three days. If the position, if the pole plant, if if the balance, we reached some goals. And of course, for someone is this is the 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 four inward movement is completely new and, and need more practice. For someone is the pole plant timing is is just okay. I need time. We have to give the time, and 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 the guys they have to give the time themselves to to work on it and to get the progress. But you see that in three days it's much, it's it's, it's a lot possible if the order is right. And I think going back to lesson one that you guys saw on YouTube with this group, I did not then take the next group and repeat, and I don't just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. I took the next group and I tried to do something different with them and because then I learned something and I could then say from the three groups that I taught over nine days which one worked the best you know which one did I have the most success with and my mistakes are what I learned from my errors of thinking that this was a good idea <laughs> sometimes like this was not a good idea like I shouldn't have done that um, but that's that's the learning process the next steps will be stay tuned because Next, I'm critiquing Gary's group and Gary's lessons, and we will be looking, and Gary will be critiquing my skiing, um, and um, <laughs> we will be fighting on the floor. Yeah, rolling around. <laughs> See you guys in the next one.